Nvidia are today unveiling the GeForce RTX 5060 series, which includes three new graphics cards, the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte, and the RTX 5060. Now, Nvidia, they are trying to bury the 8 gigabyte models. There's quite a few shenanigans occurring with this launch that we'll talk about in this video. Safe to say we were unimpressed and maybe a little confused with what Nvidia presented to us, but anyway, we'll get into all of that in just a moment. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzner, one of Europe's top hosting providers and data center operators with their locations in Germany, Finland, the USA, and Singapore. Trusted since 1997 for powerful infrastructure, great pricing, and rock solid support. With the US Cloud Act able to force any American company to share your data, choosing a German hosting provider like Hetzner ensures that your data is not only protected by the GDPR, but also benefits from the comprehensive security requirements of German data privacy laws. With a European cloud provider such as Hetzner Cloud, your data is not only GDPR compliant, but can also be easily scaled at any time to suit your needs, flexibly and securely. For more information on Hetzner and the service they offer, please click the link in the video description. To start with, let's focus on the graphics cards and what they are bringing. The RTX 5060 Ti in both memory configurations will be available on April 16th, so that's tomorrow, priced at $430 US for the 16 gig card and $380 US for the 8 gig card. The RTX 5060, which is also an 8 gigabyte model, will be available at some point in May for $300 US. Now, of course, there's a lot of volatility at the moment in the United States when it comes to the prices of consumer electronics manufactured outside the US, thanks to tariffs. NVIDIA confirmed to us these are pre-tariff global prices. So if tariffs or other taxes apply in your region, including in the United States, this will be added on to the price of the graphics card. Excluding those things, you should see a rough conversion from these USD global prices into your local currency in line with the rest of the RTX 50 series. So for the 5060 Ti 16GB, it's 22% cheaper than the RTX 5070, so in your region it should be priced 22% below whatever the 5070 MSRP is. NVIDIA wouldn't give us an expected real retail price for the RTX 5060 series for US customers because they aren't sure what the exact tariffs will be on launch day, and fair enough, it does seem to change on a day-by-day -day basis. Needless to say, the real price is going to be quite bad, though it will depend where the cards are manufactured, whether that's China, Taiwan, Vietnam, or elsewhere. Globally, though, we'll be keeping an eye on prices to make sure what we're looking at here is accurate and not misleading. We don't want to see US tariffs inflate the prices for customers in countries where tariffs don't apply. The cards themselves are based on NVIDIA's GB206 die. Both RTX 5060 Ti configurations use the same core, the only difference being the memory capacity. There's 4,608 CUDA cores, up 6% from the 4,352 cores in the RTX 4060 Ti, with a boost clock of 2.57 GHz. There's a 128-bit memory bus utilizing 28 gigabits per second GDDR7 memory, so we're expecting bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second, regardless of whether you go for the 16 gigabyte or 8 gigabyte capacities. Nvidia didn't confirm this directly, but we're expecting a PCIe 5.0 x 8 interface, though they did confirm full display port 2.1b UHBR20, like the other 50 series models. The RTX 5060 is a cut down version with what we believe is 3840 CUDA cores. The memory subsystem is the same as the TI model, a 128 bit memory bus, 28 gigabits per second GDDR7, and 8 gigabytes of capacity. NVIDIA are claiming the 5060 achieves 80% the performance of the 5060 Ti at around 80% the price comparing the 8 gig models. Now, if you've been following the Hardware Unboxed channel for a while, I'm sure you're familiar with our opinion on 8GB graphics cards in 2025, an opinion that seems to be shared by many other tech channels as well right now. I'm not going to labor on this point for ages, so I'll just say that paying $380 for an 8GB GPU in 2025 is a terrible idea, and even $300 for the 8GB RTX 5060 is still a sick joke. The 5060 simply should have more VRAM at this price. We strongly believe the price ceiling for 8GB cards this generation should be $200 US, so Nvidia are well above that with the 5060 Ti 8GB, and real-world prices are set to be even worse. 
There is a small saving grace here in that the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte is coming out of the gate at $430, $50 more than the 8 gigabyte card and lower than the $500 initial MSRP we saw from the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, though that card did quickly fall to $450 US. There's none of this ludicrous $100 premium at launch for 16 gigabytes this time around. Practically speaking, each of the TI models is $20 cheaper than its predecessor, and $430 is the cheapest price NVIDIA have ever offered for a 16GB GPU. This begs the question of why the 5060 Ti 8GB even exists. It seems like a pointless bad product, and of course the 5060 should just have more memory at the same price. We asked why the 5060 wasn't equipped with 12GB of VRAM using 3GB GDDR7 modules, and the answer we got was that those 3GB modules are rare and expensive, making them impractical for the 5060. That's really just an excuse in my opinion, Nvidia needed to find a solution to give this graphics card more VRAM, whether that was hurting margins with 3GB modules or doubling the VRAM to 16GB. It's not our or gamers problem that Nvidia designed this GPU with an insufficient 128-bit memory bus instead of 192-bit, thereby only allowing for unfavorable memory configurations. That issue is on Nvidia. In terms of performance, Nvidia are claiming the RTX 5060 Ti will offer 20% more performance than the RTX 4060 Ti when excluding frame generation and all that stuff. So apples to apples, about 20% faster. Of course, they're claiming all the usual 2x performance BS in slides, but at least they did give us a more realistic figure. This should bump the 5060 Ti up to delivering performance just shy of the RTX 4070, at least for the 16GB card. The 8GB model will be limited by VRAM in many games. Using this as a rough guide for value, the 5060 Ti 16GB at $430 should deliver around 15-20% to lower cost per frame than the 4070 and similar value to the RTX 5070, so we'll see whether that's true in reviews. Some of the 50 series models have underwhelmed compared to Nvidia's claims, so hopefully that isn't the case with this model, though pricing and expected value does indicate that the 16GB card is the focus of the lineup this time, not the 8GB card. For the RTX 5060, Nvidia are claiming a 20-25% to performance uplift over the RTX 4060 at the same price, though of course with the usual concerns around VRAM limitations. Again, this card should be offering similar value to other 50 series models, and I'm glad we aren't just getting product stagnation in the mainstream this generation, at least from a performance standpoint. The RTX 4060 series was very similar to the 3060 series in performance, but the 5060 series seems to be genuinely faster, so the lack of a corresponding VRAM uplift for the RTX 5060 could really bite here as higher resolutions and quality presets become more viable. With that said, I wouldn't describe these gains as mind-blowing over the 30 series. The RTX 5060 Ti 16GB should be around 30% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti while also packing double the VRAM. In pure dollar terms, it's $30 more at launch, but adjusted for inflation around $60 cheaper. That equates to a 33% reduction in cost per frame after four and a half years. That's a similar improvement to what the 3060 Ti provided over the RTX 2060 and 2060 Super, which were released less than two years apart. So there's been much slower progress over the last two generations. We're also expecting the RTX 5060 to be around 30% faster than the RTX 3060 to go along with a $100 lower price, adjusted for inflation. This should equate to over 40% lower cost per frame, but the value is hurt significantly by VRAM going backwards from 12GB to just 8GB. This card would look a lot better if the opposite occurred and it packed 16GB instead. 40% cheaper on a cost per frame basis with more VRAM would be a hit, whereas it'll be much tougher for the actual 5060 8GB to succeed to that degree. Beyond the pricing, specifications, and performance claims, this launch from NVIDIA is one of the most bizarre that we've ever seen. Muddied messaging, clear attempts to sweep products under the rug, some horrible slides, and statements in our briefing with NVIDIA that left Steve and I befuddled at what we were hearing. So to start with, the RTX 5060 Ti 16 and 8GB models both launch on the same day, April 16th, but also possibly don't launch on the same day. Nvidia told us the 8 gig card is coming slightly later, perhaps a week or so after the 16 gig card, which would make it launch on a different day. But despite this, they both have 
the same launch day. Hard to know what's going on there. The 16 gig card should definitely be available on the 16th, and Nvidia claim there will be reasonable supply at launch. But again, that's what they've said about previous launches too, so that should be taken with a huge grain of salt. Now, while the launch is claimed to be the same day for the two variants, Nvidia are only sampling the 16 gig card for reviews. So that is what will be covered on launch day. But it goes beyond that because we've been told that AIBs will not be supplying the 8 gig card for reviews, and in fact, cannot supply the 8 gig card for reviews. Despite Nvidia giving us permission to source 8 gigabyte models for day one reviews, board partners told us they were unable to send us a graphics card, in some cases because they weren't ready, but in other cases because Nvidia had explicitly explicitly prevented them from doing so. So the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte might be launching on April 16th. We're still not sure about that, but best case, there could be limited availability on that day. But you won't see reviews for that model because board partners can't sample it. And that's bad. Now we asked Nvidia whether they were prioritizing the 16 gig card over the 8 gig for this release. And they initially said they weren't prioritizing one model over the other but then later in our briefing actually admitted they were prioritizing the 16 gig model. So the mixed messaging here is super weird. Supposedly launching both models on the same day, but only making it possible to review the 16 gig cards is very bad for casual GeForce buyers. Both models have a very similar name and the eight gig card will be the cheapest model at retailers. So those who are unaware of the difference will be hunting for the best value model and running into the eight gigabyte card. But all the reviews, all the feedback and potential hype will be based off the 16 gigabyte variant, which won't have the VRAM limitations of the cheaper model. It seems this is an attempt to manipulate day one reception into focusing on the 16 gigabyte card while still sliding out a cheaper, crappier model that piggybacks on the reception of the better card, ultimately selling it to unsuspecting buyers. Even worse is how Nvidia are handling the RTX 5060. This card launches in May with no specified launch date, and would you believe it, the review embargo for this card expires on April 16th, along with the RTX 5060 Ti. This means there is no explicit launch date for this card, no launch day coverage, no sampling, no review program. It's a free-for-all. In most circumstances, cards will be hitting store shelves for gamers to buy before anyone critically evaluates them and figures out whether the product is good or not, a complete contrast to other graphics card launches where usually buyers are made aware of the strengths and weaknesses either before or alongside the release. Nvidia insisted to us that doing this is not burying the RTX 5060, but to us, this sure looks like Nvidia are trying to bury the RTX 5060. If I wanted to bury critical evaluations of this GPU, I would do exactly what Nvidia has done, release the model on some random day that no one knows with no early reviews or samples. This means some people will be buying it without a review at all. The reviewers that rely on review samples and can't justify buying the card themselves will not cover the 5060 at all, and other reviews will be delayed until after people have bought it. This has the effect of minimizing review coverage relative to a product with a broad review program, like the RTX 5090. But again, Nvidia say that they aren't burying the 5060. Now, of course, reviewers aren't entitled to review samples, but it's a really bad look to be willing to provide cards like the RTX 5070 and 5080 weeks before launch so that reviews can be released the day before they go on sale, while the RTX 5060 is just shoved out onto the market without coverage. The contrast between those launches makes it look like Nvidia want to bury or hide the RTX 5060. The same playbook used for cards like the crappy RTX 3056 gigabyte Though I'm interested to hear your comments, your thoughts, if you disagree. So leave those in the comments below. Nvidia provided some, let's be honest, rather laughable reasons for going down this path. One is that they are launching too many products at once and aren't able to focus on the RTX 5060. This of course makes absolutely no sense. First of all, Nvidia could just change the release schedule so that they could focus on the 5060 if that was a real problem, but also because they were able to launch all of the RTX 5090, 5080, and 5070 Ti within the space of three weeks, all of which had full review programs. So I'm not buying that answer. It's BS, especially because the 60 class is extremely popular and in any reasonable lineup should be a major focus. They also claim that the audience for the RTX 5060 isn't enthusiasts that would watch review channels like Hardware Unboxed. So launch reviews are less important, or I guess not important at all. This is both not true and also a cop-out. 
Hardware Unbox viewers are not just all rich gamers able to afford RTX 5090s. There are lots of people, lots of you guys that watch our channel and other tech channels that buy mainstream graphics cards. The reviews we've made for previous entry level and mainstream cards have been very popular. So claiming a $300 GPU isn't meant for PC enthusiasts is ridiculous. You could maybe say that for absolute bottom of the barrel, $150 stuff that a lot of enthusiast gamers ignore, but for literally the most popular card in Nvidia's lineup every year, surely Nvidia didn't think we'd buy this reason, while simultaneously claiming in the same briefing that gamers love the 60 series. So gamers love it, but enthusiast gamers don't care about mainstream GPU reviews? What are NVIDIA on about? I was actually kind of losing my mind in our briefing listening to these excuses. Our take, so both myself and Steve's opinion after discussing it earlier today, is really simple. NVIDIA are anticipating that the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB and RTX 5060 8GB will be destroyed in reviews because they have insufficient VRAM. It's a really hot topic at the moment. There are lots of channels making content about how 8GB isn't enough for modern gaming in the lead up to these products. So instead of having their new 60 class GPUs cop tons of negative feedback from everyone, they're trying to limit the damage by focusing on the 16 gig 5060 Ti and leaving the rest to rot, only to be covered by those that will purchase one for review after they go on sale. This strongly appears to be a case of burying the 8GB models despite what Nvidia are attempting to claim. Ultimately, it doesn't appear like Nvidia are confident the 8GB cards are good products that are worth buying. Their actions are saying that they do not believe in these products and are not confident these products will be well received. Companies that are proud of their products want to spread the word and highlight their qualities. Nvidia are doing the opposite. And while we're talking about highlighting their qualities, Nvidia are still insisting on marketing these cards as offering 2x the frame rate of previous models, though I guess they're changing up the wording slightly to refer more to frame rate than performance as they did with the RTX 5070. This includes showing examples like running Black Myth Wukong at 102 FPS with multi frame generation enabled and Cyberpunk 2077 at 108 FPS. The problem, of course, is that both examples see the game running with a base render rate below 30 FPS with high latency, which is a truly horrible experience despite the smoothness of multi-frame generation outputting over 100 FPS. I mean, seriously, what are we even doing here, guys? Nvidia needs to take a step back and look at how stupidly far they are willing to push this 2x frame rate stuff when selling new products. These sorts of claims might have worked originally years ago, but gamers aren't buying it anymore. These are the sorts of examples that are used to criticize or make fun of Nvidia, and believing this is a good experience is full-blown drinking the Kool-Aid stuff. We've gone so far away from configurations that might be reasonable, and yes, there are configurations where it is reasonable to use frame generation and the experience isn't that bad, but we've gone so far away from that that we're in the silly realm now. Nvidia need to look at this from an outside perspective and really think about whether these sorts of claims are helping or hurting the GeForce brand. I don't even know what else to say about the RTX 5060 series. Honestly, I struggled to process some of the excuses that were used during our briefing, some really baffling stuff, and I walked away from it thinking Nvidia are not confident in these products. The 50 series has been a real mess for them, not a lot of positive stories have emerged from this one, and honestly, it's not getting any better. For now, let's just wait until the reviews in the coming days to see where everything really sits, because hopefully it's maybe somewhat better than what NVIDIA has shown in this presentation. But yeah, we'll see in the next couple of days. So anyway, that's it for our news piece. News, I guess you could say, talking about the RTX 5060 series. Again, what else can you really say? Just a weird one. Um, yeah, not really sure what's going on. So let's just end this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.